Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Unplanned Podcast. We are attempting, by we I mean I, (laughs) am attempting to do this monthly, but as you might be able to tell from the title, I am switching things up a little bit, and I'm really excited to bring you this guest interview with Savannah from Savannah Scribbles. This is something that I've always really wanted to do. I've wanted to have conversations with creatives of all mediums and ask them about business, but also ask them about their creative process and just their approach to things. So I hope you find this as interesting as it was for me to record, and I hope you find these valuable as well. I am looking forward to bringing you these guest interviews every two months. We're going to alternate between me doing a deep dive on topics on my own and then doing guest interviews. And my whole thought process behind this project is that I love listening to podcast interviews because I love learning from other people that are doing really well in their fields. But I feel like there's less of a focus, less of a highlight on smaller creatives and micro businesses where it's just one person running it. And I just really want to redefine what success is can be. Yes, there are very successful businesses and creatives out there, but there are also a lot smaller ones that are still just as successful and are running their business maybe on the side or full time. And I think those experiences are really important to share. And I really want to showcase that. So that is what the point of this whole project is. But I can't wait to bring you more interviews with creatives that I think aren't really given as much credit in the business and creative world. We tend to put really wildly successful people up on a pedestal, which is justified because they're doing really well. But I think we need to redefine what success means to us. And I just really want to reinforce that we don't need to be making millions of dollars in order to have a successful career. I want us to redefine that in our own way. And so I want to highlight these smaller businesses and creatives that are living a creative and fulfilled life on their own terms. So I hope you enjoy this interview and thank you so much to Savannah for being my very first guest. I have Animal Crossing. I have. Oh, I, I always have Twitch on. <laughs> like I have to have something on in the background, in the background. so I normally just have someone playing Animal Crossing because I can't play right now. So if you're wondering what's, it's just Animal. Yes, yeah, I was wondering actually. <laughs> um, have you ever considered streaming Animal Crossing? Honestly, I feel like streaming it would be so cool because I'd love to have like emotes and. And just like the, I don't know, it just sounds cool. I just, whether I have time to do it, I guess is more of the, that's the real question, the the question slash if I want to be like in the public eye almost, I don't Mm. know. It's just like, I don't know if I'd use a webcam necessarily, but I don't know. I've thought about it though. Yeah, about it. <laughs> I think that would be pretty fun to watch because I know you did mention to me that you were considering maybe doing YouTube videos as well. Yeah, uh, again, time <laughs> slash. Uh, I just don't know where to start, I guess, because I feel like I think studio vlogs would be really cool, but I feel like I don't do enough within a certain amount of time to like make a studio vlog. Mm. Um, if that makes sense, it's it'll... <sighs> I don't know. I feel like I, my life's just not interesting enough. <laughs> yeah, everyone everyone says that. But I mean, studio vlogs are just technically pretty boring stuff anyway. <laughs> it's just like things that we always do. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Although it's, I don't know, it's always interesting, like when other people do it. And I'm like, oh, that'd be so cool to do like aesthetic shots of coffee in the morning. <laughs> just like, like drawing on the iPad or stuff like that. But yeah, and your know. it's, it's even. still on my to do list, but it's not a priority, I guess. Mm, Yeah, no, I get that. You've got a lot of things going on, definitely. Um, So I guess we should actually properly introduce you. So Savannah Scribbles, could you tell us a little bit about yourself for those of you, for those of um, the audience that don't know you? Yeah, so um, hi, I'm Savannah. Uh, I am a full-time graphic designer and social media manager for a small independent skincare brand Uh, But on the side, I have a bullet journaling Instagram and I also own a small business shop where I sell 
stationery and stickers and all that fun stuff. So. Yeah, and you yeah. just <laughs> launched recently too as well. Yeah. <laughs> and you've already had your third shop update and the third one was this morning. <laughs> it was, Yeah, it was this morning. Um, it was my first time doing like a holiday launch and like, you know, Black Friday kind of deal. Yeah. Definitely yeah. was a little, I wasn't nervous. I just realized once I launched it and everything that I was not as prepared as I should have been. I feel mm-hmm. it, but I feel like that also kind of comes with time. Yeah. Like the more you kind of, you're the more seasoned you are when it comes to making products and having updates, the kind of easier it is for you to, to launch it. Um, but yeah, third, third shop update. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, yeah, yeah, it's cool. awesome. I think, I feel like you're really organized with it. And even though you say that you get better with time, I feel like I've been doing it for like almost two years now and I'm still <laughs> just as unprepared every single time. Um, but do yeah. you feel yourself slowly getting better with each shop update? I do. I, I think the, the one thing that I've noticed that I'm getting better at is the physical listing of products. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause I do use uh, Etsy for my shop. Um, and for my first shop update, I didn't realize how much time it was going to take for me to take yes. the photo, list it, do the tariff codes for international, like all this stuff just added up. And I was like, I have five minutes till it launches and I still have so much to do. <laughs> yeah. So I think when it comes to technical and logic, logistical stuff, it's getting better because I now mm-hmm. know how much time it takes. Like it doesn't yeah. take an hour. It takes a lot longer than that, especially if you're listing more than five products. Um, but as far as everything else, I'd say it's definitely gotten easier. Um, but mainly just the the back end is what takes yes the most time. The for part sure. that people don't see. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What would you say is your favorite part of doing a shop update? And maybe you've already answered it, but your least favorite part. <laughs> well, yeah, least favorite part is definitely <laughs> the, the back end of everything. Uh, my favorite part, I guess... I mean, I guess making the products would be kind yeah. of like the obvious answer, but um making it in the sense of having that idea and being super inspired with it not so much seeing the physical copy it's okay. it, which is might sound kind of weird but i feel like i get more joy out of out of seeing it come together because sometimes like with uh when it comes to like making certain things uh like with cricket for example i've been having a lot of <laughs> problems with doing it and it can t- kind of take the joy out of it because yes. it might not turn out that great or it cuts off all the time. And it's just like such like a frustrating part of it. It's still rewarding, obviously mm-hmm. seeing it, seeing the finished product, but there's the no kind better of satisfaction out of it. than <laughs> seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I know uh, what you mean. Yeah. Getting the idea out of your head and actually yeah. starting to work on it yeah I find that pretty rewarding yeah. as well and just like for me it's like printer issues just something always goes wrong every time there's a shop update it's just timed so perfectly that something will always go wrong yeah it's like if I'm printing something for my journals or just doing something for myself I have no problem <laughs> but then when it comes to doing something for other people or doing it for my shop like I made my brother's business cards uh last week and I just like it nothing was working. Like it just, took, <laughs> it took so much longer than it, it usually does yeah. for, for something like that. But I guess it's just kind of how it works. And yeah. <laughs> and I find that with the deadline of shop updates, because I'm never, I'm always doing things like one, two days before the actual launch. So it's like even more stressful because you're like, I need to get this done like really, really quickly. Yeah. yeah. But um, I feel like a few people will be wondering, um, how do you balance everything like your day job because you have a full-time job and your Etsy shop and your Instagram on the side because you are doing a lot of things. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, I think it also, uh, what comes into play too, is that even though I do have a full-time job, it's not a super demanding job. Um, I can, because I do work from home every day, especially since the pandemic started, I've just gotten used to kind of making my own routine. Um, So because my job isn't super demanding, I can kind of 
work around uh, what I have to do for that job, plus kind of weave in what I do for my journaling and for my shop. Um, so I, th I think in the beginning, it was a lot uh, more difficult to find the time to journal. Mm -hmm. And I still, I still find it hard to find the time now, but I know that it's going to take me at least an hour to do one journal spread. So I, I already know going into it that I'm gonna, not going to need to be disturbed for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's difficult, honestly, uh, when you do have other responsibilities and needing to find that time. But sometimes when you do have the time, you're not motivated yeah, to do ask you about that. whatever yeah. it is that you need. So if I know that I have to post something on Instagram or I know that I have a shop update coming out, but I'm not feeling motivated to make stickers or do a certain journaling spread, then I just end up not using that time that I have for free. Yeah. So it's, it's challenging for sure. But um, I think just kind of not putting so much pressure on yourself to get something done and just letting it flow uh, makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. And putting too much pressure on yourself creatively will just have the opposite effect yeah. anyway. Yeah. Exactly. I was going to say the hardest part probably, I mean, it's good that you work from home so you save time on the commute as well. But I was going to say balancing like another full-time job, I would say the mental switching like even when you do make time for journaling it's just like you have to switch out of the other work mode and just try to like think about the other thing yeah especially because the well. um the instagram account that i do manage for my full-time job the aesthetic is completely different yeah it's yeah. all pastels and uh bright colors and then like my instagram's none of that completely so, <laughs> muted yeah <laughs> it's like a it's a complete like exactly creative switch, but it's easier to make that switch because it's something mm. I love to do. Yeah. So it's not as difficult as I guess going like maybe the other way around. Um, and I feel like the, the season, the seasonal changes also can kind of affect motivation. Um, mm. I found it really difficult to, create winter products for this shop update because I live in California mm. and it, the, the we wet, winter <laughs> is not really a thing here at least we're in the part of California I'm in it's I mean the other day it was like 80 degrees so mm -hmm. not really that winter <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds really um, hot to me but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't know what the conversion rate is but it's it's just hot yeah. um too hot for me but so it's, I'm a really seasonal dependent person, which is, I guess, a good and a bad thing. Like in, when it rains, I'm like all kinds of inspired when it's oh, the fall, okay. I'm all kinds of inspired. Yeah, I know you love when the fall. When it's hot, summer, I really don't feel like doing much. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of another thing I, I've been needing to uh, to work on just to find other ways to be inspired to work on a certain thing mm. and not be so dependent on things I can't control. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm the same with weather, except I'm a little bit flipped. So when it rains, I'm like, I don't feel like doing anything. <laughs> I'm just cold and tired. Like right now it's so gloomy, but when it's sunny, I'm like, I'm ready to do anything. Like I love yeah, the, the yeah, warm weather. I'm so opposite. <laughs> Yeah, so, I don't know why you're living in California if you don't <laughs> feel inspired. I know, I know. It's, I mean, I, I grew up here and this is kind of like where I, I've lived my whole life and I went to college. It's here. So I this is all I know. But yeah, eventually uh, we'd love to move elsewhere, ideally yeah. to someplace that isn't sunny all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well I'm yeah. pretty warm here too but I would love to live in California it just sounds amazing I know is it because well, I know in Australia the the weather is kind of different compared to here as far as like time of the year right yeah. so yeah we're flipped so we're opposite so our Christmases are just really really hot um but even between different states like in Sydney it's pretty much sunny like 90% of the year but if you go to Melbourne it's like 
it's like London weather. It's just raining and cold all the time, even though we're See, right, right next to each other. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I studied abroad in London when I was in college for like six months and I had an internship there and everything. And oh my God, that weather was the best weather oh. I've ever been in. <laughs> oh I loved God. it so much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can see the influence coming through in um, your journal spreads. Thing. Do you love <laughs> oh, the cozy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there ever times when you're creating like a cozy kind of aesthetic look, but it's really hot? <laughs> Is that most of the time? Uh, yeah, that's like 90% <laughs> of the time. I think this year it's probably rained maybe like five times. Wow. Six. Yeah. It's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> That's so it's funny. so, so sad. opposite. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, your thought process leading up to launching your shop because I know you wanted to launch your shop for a while. So I just wanted you to talk about like, were you hesitating? Like, why were the reasons why you didn't launch earlier? Did you wish you launched earlier? Yeah. Um, I feel like I launched when I was emotionally, mentally, and physically ready for it. And by physically, I mean the space I was in. Uh, my my fiance and I lived in a very small studio apartment, mm-hmm. and I had this like little tiny corner. Uh, and I just I loved the corner, but after a while, it just I wasn't getting inspired. And I feel like the space you're in has a lot to do with being motivated and being inspired, especially for an artist. And yeah. I just physically wasn't ready to or even had the space to really open a Mm. shop Um, that shouldn't stop anyone ever from pursuing a dream. But for me personally, I just, I knew it wasn't the right time to do it. Um, And I feel like monetarily as well, I knew that it was going to be something that I had to invest a good amount of money in. I wanted to get a good printer, a good um, cutting machine and, supplies obviously so saving up for that too was Mm -hmm. something that I was kind of waiting for so expensive yeah (laughs) um and I just I feel like I wasn't also grown into myself as a artist yet I feel like Mm -hmm. I was still developing uh my style and I uh, both for digital drawing and also for journaling Um, Because if you were to look back at my very first Instagram post for journaling, it looks like someone else made that journaling post. It is, (laughs) it's completely different, but it also shows, like, you can kind of see the progression of when I started versus where I am now. And I feel like I wasn't confident enough in my skills to start something, Yeah, Um, which is why... Uh, I didn't open it till September of this year uh, because I felt confident in every sense of the word. Um, And I I was just ready to do it. That's amazing because I feel like no one ever really says they felt ready to do it, even though you felt like it was the right time to do it. So I think that was, that's really interesting. Um, I definitely yeah. didn't, I didn't remember when I launched. I can't, I can't remember anything. <laughs> <being said. laughs> but I remember not ever being ready, but at the same time, like, because I think you can relate to this because you're in your head so much. You're like, I've just been thinking about this for so long. I'm also over it. So it's that simultaneous, right. like, I'm not ready, but I just need to get this out there because I just can't stop thinking about this kind of thing. So I think I just yeah. eventually got to the point where I got so sick of myself that I'm like, if I don't do something about it, like, I'm just going to go crazy. Um, but you said that you felt like you your style hadn't developed yet, which I thought was interesting because I thought you have one of the strongest kind of styles because you're really consistent with your style. But obviously, if you look back over your Instagram feed, I haven't scrolled back that far. <laughs> but I, if you look back, I, I, it's a feed, trip. I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have um would you say it's taken you to kind of get to so you still feel like your style is evolving but how long has it taken you to get to where you are in terms of style and knowing what you like um I'd say probably a year I'd uh, I think because I I can't remember when I started bullet journaling I think it was 2019 mm. I believe is when I made my first post 
Um, and even at the end of that year, I, you can kind of see the switch to when I went from very Pinterest minimalist, Mm. because that's what I thought I wanted, Mm. uh, to very like scrapbooky and messy, uh, and much more myself. Um, so I, I think it took probably about a year for me to, to be, uh, I wouldn't say confident in my journaling, just maybe comfortable is the Mm. word, just really satisfied with what I was doing and felt like it was a reflection of me. And um, because I feel like, especially for artists in general, the tendency to compare yourself to everyone out there, regardless Mm. of what part of their artistic journey they're on is just, is very, uh, it's very easy to fall into that hole. Mm -hmm. And I was on Pinterest so much when I first started um, because I wanted my journaling spreads to be like what I saw. Mm. And now I really only go on Pinterest if I need photos for my journal or inspiration for other things. But Mm -hmm. because I think it's because I've just fallen so much in love with what I create that I don't really find the need to look at other journals for inspiration when it comes to that because I'm confident in my style yeah and you're learning to trust what you like as well trust the process yeah (laughs) I think it's really hard for people to get to yeah it definitely wasn't an overnight situation it took months and trial and error Uh, do I like this do I not like this um and sometimes I feel like it's almost too much and when I say that, I mean, because it, it takes a long time mm. it, <laughs> to make a journaling spread. It, it could take like about an hour. Mm. And sometimes I don't have an hour and sometimes I don't want it to take an hour, but I just kind of end up losing myself in it. And it just ends up taking an hour. So <laughs> um, it's a good and a bad thing. <laughs> Do you always know what your spreads will turn out like when you start working on them? Do you always have some sort of plan in mind? Um. When it comes to monthly spreads, I do. Uh, if I'm just journaling for myself or if, for instance, um, your, uh, I actually got your package in the mail today. Yeah, so as soon as I saw it, oh, well, obviously, yeah, you saw it. Um, and I was just like, I have to start uh, a spread with these stickers. So sometimes it just comes out if I get something in the mail or a new yeah. journal, then I just, the same, I get yeah. immediately inspired to make a spread. Um, I don't really plan it out too much as to how it would look like. It's kind of just like, Oh, I want to use this. I want to use this. And then I'll just kind of put it together. Mm. But there really isn't much planning that goes into it unless it's a monthly spread where I try to come up with a theme and then work from there. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's kind of dependent to be honest. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Cause I just feel like you're so consistent with your content that I don't, I don't know how you're able to like produce that many spreads. I think it's amazing. Um, and it's <laughs> even better that you're not really planning for it. Um, <laughs> but I was going to ask you with, um, because yeah, Pinterest for journaling, it's like such a huge resource for it and it is easy to get lost in it. Um, would you say the same thing for Instagram? Like, do you find it, do you have to ignore kind of other feeds, um, other profiles on Instagram so that you're not really influenced? Yeah, I I mean, I love seeing what other people create. And I feel like there's a fine line between trying to love it, but not think that you have to change what you're currently doing. Yes. Yeah. Um, whether it's with having your own business or journaling or painting or whatever the case is, there it's it's difficult for sure because I, I want to I, I want to see what other people are creating, mm. but, at, but at the same time, there's always this voice in the back of my head that's saying like, maybe you could do this, or maybe yeah. you should change how you do this, or maybe you should make stickers like this instead of how you're doing it. Uh, so it's, it's a scary place to go yeah. into your mind and, and think that you have to change everything about how you're doing it because of 
maybe someone else's success with something else or um, maybe like how they're like what sticker paper they're using. I don't know. I feel like it kind of ranges on the scale as to, to how deep you can go with it, but yeah, it's a fine line. Um, How do you uh, kind of manage that? Do you have any systems in place to make sure you're not on Instagram too much or do you say things to yourself to break yourself out of that thought process? (laughs) Um, I think it's, I just don't spend too much time looking at it yeah I appreciate I see it I appreciate it I I would comment I would like it but I don't I I I just don't try to get so consumed by it yeah and I think because I am on Instagram so much not only for my full-time job but for my business and for journaling that I just I try not to spend too much time on Instagram outside of that Mm -hmm. um I don't really have like a method of kind of staying away from it uh I just I just try not to get too consumed by the outlet itself yeah that makes sense yeah no I'm the same as well because I just find it it's just the scrolling and just you have to break yourself out of just like okay I've been scrolling for how long now like I think that's enough like take a step back yeah but I think it's really easy for I know it's a really common feeling to just feel like you're not doing enough when you see other people posting and yeah especially because you're so popular in the the journaling community as well I feel like other people might look at your spreads and think like oh my spreads don't look like that and they start to feel bad about themselves so yeah yeah, I think I think it's really important to not let yourself dwell on it and to not compare yourself to other people because they're all always at different parts of the the journey like you don't know how long it took them to get where they are right yeah and there's been a few times where I've gotten comments on my um Instagram posts of people saying like, like, I wish I had time for this. I wish I could do this. Like, it's so cool. I mostly it was just like, I wish I had the creativity or the time to do this. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it just breaks my heart because I, I don't want people to think that like it, that you don't have that, like it's, you don't have to journal because you don't have the time or you don't have creativity, Mm -hmm. whatever creativity means to you um journaling could be as simple as just writing your to-do list with like maybe like a little star or like a a, you know an underlining or it could be as complex as what I do but it shouldn't stop you from starting it yeah and I I feel like a lot of people when it comes especially when it comes to certain art mediums it's either you go all the way or you don't start at all. Yes. That's and so it's, true. it's sad. And I, yeah. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, really intimidating because you're just, you're seeing the more complex finished products that it doesn't even want to, yeah, make you start for sure. Especially yeah. with journaling. I found that really intimid- intimidating at the beginning. And I was like, I would never be able to do these spreads. And I was just doing really, really simple to-do lists, but it just kind of happened naturally, I guess, because of the content I consume. So I started sticking things in my journal here and there and it just yeah, eventually became like my own style. Um, but I was going to ask you as well, just going back to your shop update and your design process, um, how you came up with the products for your shop. Did you already have an idea of like what you wanted to do? Because you have quite a, a range of products, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I, I feel like with my products, a lot of myself is in them. A lot of stuff that I personally love is reflected in one way or another in the products that I release. Um, or maybe not so much solely what I love, but something that I aspire to mm. enjoy or aspire to be a part of. For example... Um, the holiday sticker sheet that I released has a lot of like cozy snow, not 80 degree weather related (laughs) things that I wish I could enjoy more. And that's like almost, I feel like 
I try to make my products almost in a world in which I would love to live in. I love that. In one way yeah. or another. Yeah. Um, so you would see like a lot of my love for fall, my love for books, for gaming, which might not suit everyone's needs. Like I feel like the gaming sphere is a very niche aspect mm. uh, when it comes to small businesses and stickers and all that, but it's something that I love. So even if it's not like the most popular item in my shop, I loved making that, yeah. those stickers. So I'm, I know I have to do it. I know I have to release it. Um, so I think it's just trying to combine a color palette that I love with a subject that I love, um, and making it something that I would want to use in my journals yeah. as well. So, yeah, we have I think it all similar. depends, but I most, I mostly get it from my day-to-day -day interests, to be honest. Do you ever sit down to plan your products or as it comes to you, you just kind of write it down to work um, on later? Well, since I, I do actually, I started using Notion. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I fell into that hole like yeah. last month. Um, was it a mistake? Probably not. Sometimes <laughs> I feel like it was a mistake because there's just it, the, like the possibilities with Notion are just. It's like digital endless. journaling, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make sure I didn't get into the, the habit of like solely using notion because I still love doing yes. um, yeah. things or traditional way. It's more just a place where I can just dump everything that's in yep. here and just yeah. kind of have it someplace where it would look nice and I could easily delete it or add something to it. Um, but I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> I think for writing down new ideas, I'm um, like, don't ask me because I forgot what I was asking as well. I, I was going memory. somewhere. There was a reason why I mentioned Notion. Um, you were planning, I, planning for. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I think uh, I, so for every shop update, I try to make a list of products that I want to release or I'm thinking about releasing. Try to do like, one or two sticker sheets, something for journaling, um, and then other products like a miscellaneous product, like a bookmark or a notebook, or I just released washi tape, which was mm -hmm. so much fun to do. That was my I first do. time ever making washi tape. And I was able to find a really great supplier. And it, I, I, it's honestly my favorite product from this shop update. Um, so I, I kind of make a list of stuff that I'm thinking about. And uh, after that, I kind of mull it over in my head about, you know, I start sketching out ideas, um, but I don't put pressure on myself to stick to that list mm. because sometimes I end up coming up with ideas later down the road um, and replace that idea with what I had at like, in my list previously yeah yeah um so i kind of just do it as i go but i mainly use notion for kind of organizing my yeah. ideas or at least yeah. i try to um plus if i see something on instagram that's like oh that'd be such a cool idea to do i save it and try to go back to it yeah um so yeah yeah i love notion for that I've just I've been trying as well to find the balance between like what can I use for digital what can I use for physical because I still love using physical to-do lists but I have actually been using um notion for my weekly kind of things it's just oh, it's, I love moving little to-dos around <laughs> when you haven't finished it and I can like oh you just drag it over here it's just, <laughs> oh. but I do get caught up with like customizing it a little bit too much and I don't want to like waste too much time on that yeah no I I, I think I stayed up when I first downloaded Notion, which was mistake number one. I, I think I stayed up until like 3 a.m. Oh my just God. Like making it look good because I, <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse that I can't just like write a title or yeah. put an image. Like I have to just do everything. Like 
I have to make the title look good or I have to have <laughs> it a certain size font, yeah. a certain color. Like it's yeah. just how my mind, I can't do anything simple, which is just so annoying because it takes so long, but I just love how it looks in the end. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's an internal battle with myself, but luckily Notion makes it really easy. I feel like. Yeah. Do you find yourself using it consistently these days for anything other than shop updates? Yes. I, I mean, I, well, let me, I could actually try to open it here. Um, I have like a list for honestly everything like future goals, monthly goals, like a book tracker, mood awesome. board, yeah. um, anime, like, <laughs> uh, just everything wedding planning. Like I just, I honestly just use it for everything. Do you find that it it um, duplicates like across your journal, physical journal and Notion? Do you ever write the same thing twice? Um, not really, to be honest, because I feel like I try to keep my journaling less day to day and more of like a monthly overview. Okay. Or if I just like want to track a habit or how I'm feeling that day. Yeah. Not so much like a to do list or uh, like a daily to do because I, I have a tendency to just kind of come up with what I'm going to do for that day. And then not like, do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And not do it or just like, <laughs> I make a to do list like halfway through the day. And then it's just like, in my brain, it just doesn't make sense. So I'd rather just have it in a place digitally where I could just yeah. easily fix it or easily delete it. Because if I write something incorrectly and have to cross it out I just it drives me kind of crazy yeah because <laughs> it's yeah. not neat anymore <laughs> um so yeah that's kind of more just like a personal problem <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and how many journals do you have that you use consistently? that's a dangerous question <laughs> <laughs> I had um, a feeling you had multiple <laughs> uh I have because I have like a a tiered like caddy I don't know if that's what you call oh, it yeah like wheels. the trolley kind of thing yeah, yeah trolley I'm not sure what to call it and I that's where I have like all my supplies I think like at least 10 wow consistently that you use oh no not consistently oh, okay. consistently <laughs> I'd say like <laughs> consistently I'd say like yeah. two okay okay yeah <laughs> Because I, I do have, sorry, that might have been a little, yeah, no, I can't. Like, Tell me your I secrets. <laughs> no, no, no. I have, I mean, well, okay, I guess I have three, to be honest, because I feel like I have one, which is my bullet journaling, which is yeah. what mainly is on my Instagram. And then I have one for my shop. And then I have a Midori uh, notebook, which is more of just like my personal spreads. Mm -hmm. um, something if I just kind of feel like journaling that isn't something I want to post and that's kind of what that's for is it in um, the same but, style as your main um yeah bullet journal? oh wow yeah it's all okay. the same style uh just maybe not as complicated yeah or as because I I feel like there's a part of being an artist where if you know something's going to be posted online yeah there's this slight pressure to make it look good or yeah. to, to kind of hit that standard that you know you can hit. Yeah. So definitely. for my personal journal, I don't think about that at all. I kind of just journal to journal. Yeah. Um, but my bullet journal is is kind of it, it's my baby. It's 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 something I'm I'm proud to show off. I, I wouldn't mind showing off my other journal, but my mindset's just completely different. Yeah. And it would change the way that you actually do those spreads for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell. Um, to wrap up, do you have any tips for someone that wants to, maybe that is looking at you and it's like, I want to be there, but I don't know how to get there. I want to start up my own Etsy shop um, or I want to start up a journaling Instagram or just start journaling for the first time. Um, what is kind of some tips that you would give them? Oh gosh. It's, <laughs> I feel like, it's an easy, easy question to answer, but also difficult because I feel like everyone's in a different point in their life and 
maybe doesn't have the the support or the space or the the time that they think they would need to do it. Um, I started in a place where I honestly didn't know where I was doing. And I feel like now, right now, I have so much inspiration coming from um, people in my life that I didn't have when I started. And I didn't really like have an outlet um, where I can take inspiration from. Um, so I guess my, my tips, uh, would be just, just start like it's, it's like, it sounds like simple to be honest, but I feel like everyone thinks that they need like all these pens and all these washi tapes and all these stickers, like all all these supplies just to start doing it, but you don't need any of that. You just honestly need a piece of paper and a writing utensil. Like it's don't go into it thinking that this is the final product because I knew when I started journaling that my journals probably weren't going to look like that in a year or in two years, I knew that I was going to evolve with myself personally and with my, with my art style. So knowing that you're going to change kind of helps you along the way too. Um, and that nothing is set in stone. Like even now for my shop, I like, I'm thinking about changing my, like the name of it. Like, why would I try to change the name of it when I just started? But it's something that's possible. It's something that you can do. And it's scary because you put so much time and you think that this is going to be it. Like I'm never, this is how I'm going to do things from now on and it's never going to change. But I think it's, that's kind of a dangerous mindset to have because you evolve as a person every day. So I think as long as you understand that nothing is permanent um, and that you don't have to be like everyone else, um, even if you think that your style is kind of similar to someone that you look up to, at the end of the day, how they journal or how they draw stickers or do art isn't going to be how you do it. And that's okay. Because I feel like you should just be proud of what you put out there. Um, And instead of regretting that you didn't do as much as you could or put products out there that didn't reflect yourself as much as you would have wanted it to. Um, That was kind of all over the place as far as an answer. That was (laughs) really, that was kind of like my, (laughs) that's kind of my, my mind a little bit, but honestly, just, just start doing it. There's no rules to journaling or to art. And if anyone tells you that there's rules to something like that, then they're wrong. Um, <laughs> probably shouldn't listen to it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you perfectly <laughs> described the fixed mindset versus the growth mindset, by the way. Um, just the growth mindset, just accepting that things will change and then you will, you will learn and that not everything is set in stone. And I think that link, links back to what you said before, where you just, you don't put that much pressure on yourself. And that's because, you know, inside you're like, I can change this if I don't like it. And I feel like, I think a lot of people get caught up in that when they're trying something new for the first time, they put so much pressure on themselves because they think it has to be perfect. And that they think if they don't get it right the first time, then I don't know what that says about them. But um, yeah, I think that's a really, really healthy um, and like the self-loving mindset to know that like you can change and you will change and you will grow over time and just to start and to be imperfect. I think that's the perfect way to end this, <laughs> end yeah. this episode. Thank you so much. That was of amazing. Um, yeah. I would love to know what is one goal for 2022? For you well, personally, you know, I was, shop for anything. I was thinking about this before I got on because I had a feeling you were going to ask, <laughs> and I, yep. which is okay. Um, <laughs> a few things I, f- 
for my Instagram, I want to try to get to posting consistently. Um, and the reason I don't, I feel like I don't post consistently is because of how long it takes the back end to kind of get right. to where I have to post. It just takes so long that by the time I'm done with the spread and done taking a photo, cause it's an entire production. Yeah. Um, it, it's, I lose a little bit of motivation. So I want to try to maybe streamline it or just be more, um, disciplined with myself as far as posting more. So how Instagram. often do you post now and what is the goal? Like what is consistent for you? Um, consistently, I want to try twice a week. Okay. Right now, I maybe <laughs> post once every week to two weeks. So I, I'm asking a lot of myself, but it's also because I know it's possible because I have a lot of journaling spreads that I haven't right posted yeah so I I have a lot on the back end the content is, is there yeah, yeah the content's there so I know the no, I could do it okay. it's just giving myself that push to do it yeah so I would say posting twice a week on Instagram um as far as my shop I want to stick to doing monthly shop updates I feel like that kind of works for me um diving deeper into different kinds of products like pins or apparel um doing more washi tapes because that was a lot of fun <laughs> um posting i want to start a blog i feel like blogging would be a mm -hmm. lot of fun or just having a newsletter yeah um, a newsletter you know i <laughs> tell you to get a newsletter i know you're an advocate <laughs> for newsletters so <laughs> um so I, I think just uh, spending more time on my brand yeah. overall, I feel like is something I want to really work on for next year. Cause I, I didn't start my shop until the end of this year. Yeah. So I feel like starting fresh and the, you know, new year, new me, but not really <laughs> just, yeah. just trying to spend more time with what I've started. Yeah. I think is is a goal for myself next that's year. amazing I think you've had a an insane year congrats on your shop launch and three <laughs> shop updates I think you've had more <laughs> shop updates than I've had in this like, entire year I don't even know that is amazing thank you so much for talking with me it was so nice to hear to see your face after I a year of <laughs> I've known you for a year, but I haven't seen your face before um and just hearing your <laughs> mindset behind everything thank you so much yeah, thank you. This was awesome. I love talking with you and hopefully we can talk again like this. Yeah, absolutely. Would love to. Love All that. right. I'll let you get back to your day and pack some orders. I know that you've got it. <laughs> thank no, you so yeah, much. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>